In this video, we'll be solving um, a flywheel problem. So this is a design of machines if you're taking that course. So I hope it will be useful. So first of all, I think we have to try to read our statement. So, okay. Okay, the Lord took uh, in a punch press for each arm. Um, on a highlighter for each revolution of a shaft is starting from here so we know that um we have 12 nms at um zero 280 and then we have this much at that distance we record that again at um we have one one four one four four nms that's um 180 to 270 and then again here we have that much 12 nms that's um seven i mean two zero to 300 i mean 360 these are all in degrees okay so now we have a full revolution so you understand that um whenever maybe you have a crankshaft crankshaft something that look uh like this and maybe there's a piston here and there's another piston maybe here uh powering this crankshaft to revolve maybe it's an engine it's keep on going google google it's not it's quite a smooth rotation so flywheels are for that flywheels they are to make um a rotation purely smooth while engine can really give us a pure smooth uh revolutions because uh the, the the actual stroke thing is like pulsing it's giving go go it's not giving smooth while your car doesn't go like but your car goes smooth it doesn't go goo -goo 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 -goo. so fly holes are there to to call to hold some momentum to keep the revolution feeling smooth for you if you're having a ride of a car so that how really that's all what fly wheels does so they're just some um solid wheel normally has huge mass to have that big momentum so that it will just uh with that moment of initial smooth out your ride so that what we are so we're having different um a talk different because of this different stroke that an engine is giving or whatever is powering this thing i have no idea so enough about talking so let's just talk and uh, let's just do the actual math the average speed uh, is given to be six uh, zero zero rpms you know that you can just change these things by saying i think i have 60 all over 2 pi okay let's just compute that obviously made a mistake here 2 pi is supposed to be on top that's my very common mistake and all over 60 then that will give us something like 20 pi but if i am trying to get it more properly it will be 62.83 because engineers love decimals okay now it's radians per let me just say whatever revolution per second so what else okay let's try to plot whatever uh information that we given here so i'll have a cartesian plane and then i know that from zero uh 280 let me just call that pi right i will be having 12 so here till that much we'll be having 12 and from that um we'll be having one four four which is quite a big number compared to 12 okay from that to two seven from to 270 i think 270 if you convert to uh I didn't see, I mean, yeah, to be two, I mean, three pies all over two. We'll be having that much here. We're having 12. Let me put it. We're having 12. Here we're having one, four, four. And then in the very last one, we're going back to 12. Another 12 here from two, two pi. Okay, that's complete revolution. Okay. So. We already have our average that's our average um angular speed if we'd say like that we already have it here um we also know there is one of uh, i think 
formula we use a lot in this chapter we'll say kinetic energy is going to equals to um the theta at the um the, the theta at um it's theta at omega max to theta at omega mean uh, we're integrating uh, t load minus t average and then t theta i think this would be just a backbone of design of, of flywheels so where is um theta omega max theta omega max is where we have we have um what do we have we're having uh, very less torque it's more of like if you think about it, it's more of like uh omega or angular speed is inverse proportional to the to the torque so whenever it's maxed down is mean so here because we're trying to achieve um max here we're going to go for mean here okay then in here we're looking for mean so we're going for uh okay let me look so if okay here that's where our maximum starts at pi so we're integrating from where our maximum um torque is or our max starting okay of which is that's going to be pi to where our mean is starting see mean go max max go mean okay uh that way around okay then here we'll have three pi all over two so we make sure that here everything is in radians then how is our what is our t load uh t load i think was given from the statement if i remember uh, let me try to find it if i i don't read very well okay the talk um and the load will be like the maximum torque that we're trying to load in so i think it's it you can see here where the peak is it's one four four minus torque average now we have to get torque average okay it's like torque load average if i write it like that it's going to be i sum all the torque here versus with the period they took so i'm actually having 12 um 12 12 took pi time if i'm taking this as time and then i'm having one four four i'm summing right uh one four four one four four took this much if you take it different here it will be three pi all over two minus pi you can do it different and then put this here after okay now we'll have 12 how much 12 took took from uh three pi all over two till uh till the other side mm, till two pi minus two pi uh if you're going to do uh, calculations on these things you're supposed to do um uh, final minus initial so you see here i made a mistake it's supposed to be the other way around so it's going to be two pi minus uh three pi all over two then if i take the difference and then how much it took the entire time is 2 pi so then after doing my calculations it will sum up to a very good number and uh, sorry for that uh, now uh, we got our it enums right because it took so we almost have everything we need we can go back to this formula now oh we're substituting our average is 45 here and then d theta and then thus with your basic calculus you can just put in your calculator or maybe work it out if your math is still not rusty but i assume it's still it's not then you'll get an answer of 15.5 nms oh it's, yes nms not yes nms as in like newton meters remember work is force distance from your physics so that's why having this type of unit so yeah i'm good and then what do i need i haven't uh, my average i got this here and then they also gave me my what they gave me assuming that the fluctuation factor is this much determine the diameter of the fly of uh, okay of a flywheel made of this material and then we have thickness so our next goal when we need to talk about dimensions uh, our next goal here is getting uh 
uh, mm. in Asia. So in, in Asia is is what have like it has the um, the dimensions inside it. So it's, if you they ask dimensions, just think of getting in Asia, and in Asia will give you radius, and radius will give you diameter backwards. So let's work that out. So there is a formula also I think I should have shared first, of uh, which is like kinetic energy all over mm, CF. We we'll use it uh, most of the time. Then we we'll have omega average squared. So we literally have all the parameters that are supposed to be plugged into this. Uh, okay, we know KE is just what we just got here, 15.5. And then we know CF, I just got it from the beta fluctuation uh, coefficient of 0, 0, 0.05. 0, 0, um, and then we have our omega. I think I just got it here. Yes, and then I plug it here. If I plug it, what do I get? I get, um, what am I plugging? Oh, it's in the bottom. I'm supposed to square it. So I'm supposed to do 62.83 squared. And then after proper computations, I'll get something like this. Remember the units are, this is kgm squared for your moment of initial. So then with that, with with this, we know that uh, initial give us dimensions because we know that uh, inertia of this. Remember, we're working with this disc with some sort of thickness. Our flywheel is like this, some sort of thickness here. Okay, this is our flywheel. We know that moment for it, it's like our uh, initial for it is like d squared all over eight. But now they gave us material that we're using so we have to know material properties okay then it's we know that mm, also know that the uh, density is equal to mass all over volume we have mass here so we have to make it in terms of mass so it will be mass is going to equals to density volume how do we get volume uh, volume is going to be the area pi r squared pi r squared um some people do d squared because everything is d here all over form and then now we have we have our mass in terms of d then we can come and substitute here d squared all over four all divided by eight multiplied by um d squared and then the the density form for what what the material this gives us uh it's carbon low carbon still so these are things that are in your table you know data sets you get uh, whatever material that they give you its properties them then after plugging in again oh i made a mistake this is volume right this, this is area we're supposed to times by thickness yes because volume it's like uh like this let me say it was a cube it would be this times this times that so this was just our this was just our this was just our area for the face of times by thickness because we're literally looking for thickness so there's thickness involved here we know our i we got it from above then after solving very well and then um you will get your thickness and then your thickness did they give us thickness or they i think they did give us thickness so they give us thickness so you're plugging in your thickness here Ooh. we know this we don't know d so you want to find d and then you solve you plug in then you solve i think if you did it very well just take it as an exercise solve uh, zero, and then you get four four nine I think meters then you can make it millimeters if you want to but here we go